Hey guys, welcome back to Builds by Maz. Today I'll be showing you how we made this seating chart for our wedding. Instead of just printing out all the table assignments, we made this ornament display, and each one had a name tag with a table number on the backside for each of our guests. Everyone really seemed to enjoy it, and they could take home an ornament keepsake after the wedding. If you like this idea, or want to do something similar, I'll show you all the steps to build it yourself. Let's get started. We started off with a 4x8 sheet of quarter inch plywood. To make a rounded top, I marked off a point in the center, slightly over 2 feet from the top of the board. Then I hammered a small nail into this mark to use as my guide. I tied some string around a pen, or in this case I actually used dental floss because I had it on hand. And then I tied the other end to the nail, making sure it was the right length so that it would just barely reach both sides of the board. Holding the string tight, I then traced a semicircle all around the top edge of the board giving it a couple of passes. I removed the nail and string, and then used my jigsaw to just trace over the line I'd made. I did this in two pieces to make cutting it more manageable, but you can see that my line extended from both sides of the board and was about an inch from the top. Adding this rounded top gave the whole thing a more elegant look, and it was pretty easy to do. The next step was to measure and mark off the first line where the first row of ornaments would go. I pretty much started this line where the curve section ended. Starting 4 inches from the edge, I made a mark every 4 inches after that to notate where each hook would go. This will make sure everything's equally spaced and there's enough room for each ornament to hang side by side. I then made marks every 4 inches along both edges and then made lines across the board to mark off where each row of hooks would go. The amount of rows you'll need will depend on the number of guests you're inviting. We needed 11 rows, with each row holding between 10 and 11 ornaments. Now here's that first row that I already marked off. And again, you can see I started the marks at 4 inches, and it was every 4 inches after that. But since the ornaments are going to be hanging down, I needed to offset this next row by 50%. So I made my first mark at 6 inches. It'll still be every 4 inches after that, but here you can see it's going to be offset from the first row. I went through and made all my marks on the second row, and if done correctly, it should make kind of a zigzag pattern like this. With the third row, we're going to go back and match the first row, making our first mark at 4 inches. So every other row will be in line, with each row between them being offset, so you'll keep getting this triangle zigzag pattern. I repeated this process for the remaining lines, making sure to offset the marks for every other line. Then I drilled a small hole on every mark, which is going to make it much easier to install the hooks later on. You'll also want to add some structure to this board, because the quarter inch plywood isn't sturdy enough to stand up on its own. I just used some scrap wood pieces that I had lying around. I think they were about 3 quarters of an inch thick, which was more than enough to help hold everything upright. I started by cutting pieces that would go down the middle and along the bottom. After getting the pieces measured and cut to size, I lined them up and attached them together using pocket screws. I drilled holes in this centerpiece, clamped the two boards together, and then attached them using the screws. If you've never used pocket holes, this process is pretty simple using a Craig jig. The screws go in at a steep angle and create a really secure connection as they drive through this second board. I added two more of these structural pieces to the sides about halfway up this plywood board and I attached these again using pocket screws. I flipped everything over and took note of where these support pieces were on the back side and then used my brad nailer to firmly attach the plywood board to the backing. If you don't have a nail gun, you could always just use some wood glue. It'll just take a little bit longer. Now any of these holes left by the brad nailer need to be covered up, so I filled them in with some wood filler. You can tell these apart from the holes that we drilled for the hooks because they're not going to be on a line like these are. They're just out in open space. Once I had all these holes filled in, I sanded down the whole board with some 220 grit sandpaper. You really just need a quick pass to make sure there are no rough spots, and then I cleaned off the whole surface. Next, it was ready for paint and we used this bare cypress vine color from Home Depot. 
Normally, you'd want to put primer on before this, but since this sign is just going to be a one-time use, I used this paint and primer combo and it worked out just fine. We used a roller to apply the paint to the front of the sign and a brush to apply it to the sides. This is a pretty fast process since the whole sign is just one flat piece of wood. You don't have to deal with any curves or contours. We got this whole thing done in maybe 15 minutes and then we let it dry before applying a second coat. You can also see that all the holes we drilled earlier for the hooks aren't being filled in by the paint, which is good because I was worried that might happen. After about an hour of dry time, we applied a second coat, which helps even out the color and ensure we got full coverage. I also painted this extra piece, which is going to go on the back of the board and help it stand up, and you'll see more on that in a bit. These are the hooks that we used to hang the ornaments. They're pretty easy to screw in by hand as long as you have a pilot hole and we made sure they were all facing upwards. This part's pretty tedious and it definitely takes a while, but we did a little bit at a time, splitting it up over a couple of days. It was easy enough to just follow along all of the pilot holes and eventually we had all the hooks screwed into place. I then got this basic hinge and used it to attach that extra wood piece to the back of the sign. This will allow it to hinge backwards so that the whole sign can lean on it and remain upright. I drilled some pilot holes in the back of the sign and on the wood piece and used some screws to attach the hinge in place. I did a quick test to make sure that everything worked properly and to decide how far back I wanted the sign to lean. I then added the pilot hole to the bottom of the sign and the support board and then tied some thin string around a screw with a washer attached. I then drove this screw into the back of the sign and it pinched down the string securing it in place. I then did the same thing on the other end, first measuring out how much string I needed, which would determine how far back the support piece can go. This string piece just adds extra security and ensures that the support piece doesn't slide out backwards collapsing the whole sign. I tested it again and everything worked great. The sign felt really sturdy and it was ready for our finishing touches. To add the lettering at the top, our friends let us use their Cricut. This is my first time using one of these and it was pretty awesome. We designed everything on the computer and then using some vinyl sticker paper, we ran it through the Cricut printer, which really isn't a printer, more of a cutter and it cuts out the letters perfectly. We removed the vinyl sticker from the Cricut guide and then could peel off the excess, leaving our lettering behind. After using some transfer paper, it's basically ready to stick on to whatever surface you need. We got everything properly lined up and spaced out, and then pressed the lettering firmly onto our board. Then removing the transfer paper, it just leaves this great finished product behind. We followed the same steps to add our initials to the very top and then this board was ready to go. Lastly, we bought some ornaments and tags and added everyone's names and table numbers to them. The morning of the wedding, some of our friends helped hang all these in alphabetical order so they were ready for our guests to retrieve them and find their table. Overall, we were so happy with the way this turned out. It was perfect for our winter wedding, it added some nice decor, and was more fun and interactive than your standard seating chart. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, and if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can see plenty more DIY projects. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.